So you're a giant titan who creates our universe from the ingredients in your locker. And so, you've got a beautiful sunburst arc galaxy. Let's put it about 11 billion light years away from the Earth. Now let's add brightness. Size? Oh, uh, you accidentally hit the copy button. Oh no, now there are 12 copies of this galaxy. Well, this scenario actually doesn't seem so impossible if you look at recent Hubble telescope images. There are four unusual arcs here. Number one, two, three, and four. And there are bright dots on each of the arcs. Each dot is an exact copy of the sunburst arc galaxy. So we have two possibilities. Either someone created 12 perfectly identical galaxies, or it's just an optical illusion. Scientists are sticking with the second option. For starters, let's look at a lantern light at night. See that circle around the light? It's called a halo. It appears when there are lots of ice crystals or water droplets in the air. These crystals refract the light from the light bulb, just like a lens. And we, as an observer, see a bright circle of light. Well, that halo circle and the sunburst arc photo do seem a little similar, don't they? Well, it really does. But what in the cold and dark of space can act as a lens and distort light? We know that a heavy enough object can warp space and time. Let's take a giant net and say this is a space-time sheet. Now let's put something heavy, weighing as much as our sun. Notice how it sagged the net? And now, there's a deep funnel here. And any object lying next to it will always fall into this funnel. That's how our solar system works. Small objects like planets and asteroids circle around the funnel with the sun. Now, put something super massive in the center of the net, a black hole. It has sagged the net so much that we can't even see the bottom of the funnel. Now, no object, not even light itself, can escape from this gravitational trap. And if we look at known black holes, we can see this in action. They suck in the light like spaghetti, leaving remnants of it on the event horizon. But it'll soon disappear, too. So the black hole bends the light, but doesn't let it get to Earth because it's too heavy. But if you put something lighter on the space-time net, it can barely warp it. We need something in the middle, something that will warp light, but not absorb it. A cluster of galaxies. Let's trace the process from the beginning. So here's the sunburst arc galaxy. It's releasing photons of light. These beams are traveling toward Earth at incredible speeds. At that speed, you could travel 93 million miles from your home to the sun in just eight minutes. These beams then encounter a cluster of galaxies, about 4.6 billion light years from Earth. This cluster acts like a lens, only it uses gravity instead of curved glass. The rays split and circle the cluster of galaxies from different directions and continue their movement toward Earth. As a result, to observers, it looks like arcs of light, each with a light copy of the galaxy. But which of these 12 copies is the real galaxy? Well, none of them. But at the same time, all these copies are one real galaxy. That's how optical illusions work. And here's the cosmic horseshoe. This bright blue arc is a system of two galaxies in the constellation Leo. The same thing is happening here. The light from these two galaxies passes through a lens of another galaxy, about 100 times heavier than our Milky Way. So the gravitational lens is not only beautiful, but also incredibly useful for our scientists. There are a lot of faint and dull objects in distant space, and we can't see them at great distances. But gravitational lenses help their light to reach the observer. And then we can begin to study these distant cosmic objects. For example, the sunburst arc is an extremely old galaxy from a time when all space was dark and had no stars at all. It was the age of reionization, about 550 to 800 million years after the Big Bang. This is when the first stars began to appear. Their light helped to charge the universe, and after a few billion years, it took on the form that we see now. So by studying galaxies like the sunburst arc, we can understand how our universe was born and formed. And such arc circles are only one type of lensing. The other type is the Einstein cross. Let's look into the constellation Pegasus. About 8 billion light years in that direction is a bright quasar. This is the active core of a galaxy, with a supermassive black hole at its center. It absorbs the stardust and matter around it and gets bigger and brighter. One quasar emits 100 times more energy than all the stars in our galaxy together. 
It's also the brightest object in the entire universe. Their brightness is estimated at plus 12.6 units. At the same time, the brightest observed star has negative 1.46. And we can observe how the bright light of the quasar bends and forms an Einstein cross. A beam of light flies to a galaxy 400 million light years from Earth and begins to warp. We as observers see the result. Four bright points and the galaxy lens itself in the center. Perhaps in the future, the quasar will become a large galaxy and will be able to observe the process of its birth through this lens. And we know of about 100 such lenses in space. These are different galaxies far enough away from Earth and heavy enough to bend light. Given that there are about 2 trillion galaxies in our universe, only 100 lenses seems like very few. All because the galaxy or cluster of stars that refract light must be dim. If they're bright, we'll only see their own light. And even our Milky Way galaxy can be used as a lens. If there's some intelligent life far out in space, and they're exploring the universe just as we are, then they could point their telescopes toward our galaxy and see the curved light from the distant worlds behind us. Interestingly, even a small object like the sun can also bend light from other stars, but it bends the light at a very small angle, so you barely see this difference. And sometimes, you can see the same copying as with the sunburst arc galaxy right here on Earth. And you don't even need a telescope. You can see three suns on the horizon in freezing weather. It's the same ice crystals that create the halo around a street lamp. They refract the light from the sun so that the circular halo has two bright dots on either side of the real sun. These dots are so bright and big that they can really be confused with a real star. A similar effect occurs with moonlight. The moon reflects the sun's rays to Earth, but the crystals in the clouds refract the light so that you see two blue dots next to the moon itself. But when it comes to gravitational lenses in space, they bend not only the light, but also the flow of time. The rules are simple. The bigger and heavier the object, the slower time flows near it. So if you find a supermassive black hole and can get to its heart, time can practically stop for you. One minute near a black hole can be equal to weeks or even months on Earth. But the Earth is also quite heavy, and it also slows down time flow. You can fly away from Earth far enough to get rid of its gravitational influence. Now you move through time a little faster than everyone else on Earth. And there's one person on Earth who has actually made such a journey. It's an astronaut who has been on the International Space Station for 803 days, 9 hours, and 39 minutes, and even 41 hours in outer space. And now he's moving through time ahead of all the inhabitants of Earth by 0.02 seconds. Let's go back to our space-time net. Let's put the Earth here. It's warped the net just a little bit, but it's enough to make the time flow at the center of the funnel differ from the time flow a few inches away. That's how this astronaut was able to time travel forward.